What's going on, you guys? I'm Aviana. And I'm DJ. Who's excited about Christmas? DJ, I said, who's excited about Christmas? Yeah! <laughs> it's so cool because we only have 19 days left. I'm so joyful, I can't stand it. There are so many reasons to have joy at Christmas. One of the things that brings me so much joy is Christmas movies. Yes. There are so many good ones like The Grinch, Santa Claus, Santa Paws, The Christmas Chronicles, Home Alone. You really know your Christmas movies, yep. DJ. I wonder if you guys know your Christmas movies as well as my friend here. We are going to be giving you some funny movie descriptions and you guys have to tell us what movie we're describing. It's going to get more difficult as we continue and there are five rounds. Let's see round one. A town is super mean to a reindeer who ends up using his special gift to save Christmas. Do you have any idea what movie that could be? It's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. All right, round two. A kid thinks he's a superhero who can take down the bad guys with cleaning and kitchen supplies. If you said Home Alone, you are correct. Let's see round three. A mean old man rejects holiday visitors until he is visited by three ghosts who take him on a journey of understanding. It's a Christmas Carol. Let's see round four. Inside a snowflake, like the one on your sleeve, there happened a story you must see to believe about a man so greedy and green, he planned to steal the whole Christmas thing. Oh, it's like a riddle. Do you guys think you can solve it and tell us what movie it is? If you said The Grinch, you are correct. Woo! All right, here's our last round, round five. An elf journeys to New York in order to find his family. It's Elf! That game seemed almost impossible at times. In today's story, we'll meet two people who face something impossible themselves, and we'll see just what God did about it. And now for an amazing true story. From the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 25, and 57 through 79. Over and over, the Israelites had turned away from God, and over and over, He rescued them. But now the Israelites were living under the harsh rule of the Roman Empire, and God's promises seemed like a mere whisper. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule on David's throne and over his kingdom. It will last forever. For 400 years, no one had shared or written down God's words like the prophets had done. Still, many in Israel held hope that God would save them. A priest named Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth obeyed all of God's commandments. But even so, they still had one great sadness. We've tried so hard to do the right thing. Why has God never given us children? We'll keep praying, Elizabeth. We're old enough to have grandchildren, great-grandchildren. I know. Oh, it seems impossible. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived near Jerusalem. When his group of priests were on duty, Zechariah served at the temple. Hey, Zech, you've been picked to burn incense to God inside the holy place. It was a great honor to serve God in the holy place of his temple. So when the time came, Zechariah took a deep breath and stepped inside. And as he lit incense at the altar, the heavy, spicy smell surrounded him. Dear God, please hear the prayers of your people. <gasps> in an instant, everything changed. All the breath left Zechariah's body. 
a shining angel towered at the right side of the altar. Don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. You and Elizabeth will have a son. Wait, what? Your son will be a joy to many people. You will name him John. He will bring the Israelites back to God and make a path ready for the Lord. Is it possible? Could God's promises be coming true? Your son will teach parents how to love their children. He will show people who don't obey how to be wise and to do right. Oh, hold on. Uh, back up. How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man. Elizabeth's old too. Light seemed to blaze from the angel. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I was sent to tell you the good news, but now you will be silent. Because you didn't believe me, you will not be able to speak until after John is born. Meanwhile, outside the temple, the priests and worshippers were getting a bit nervous. Uh, Zechariah wasn't exactly on schedule. Oh. You know, it isn't like Zech to take so long. At last, Zechariah burst out of the temple and stood before the waiting crowd. But instead of giving them God's blessing, Zechariah could only gesture. He couldn't talk. After Zechariah's time of service was over, he went home. Within a short time, the angel's words came true. Zechariah, we, we are going to have a baby. The Lord has done this for us. <laughs> well, Zechariah still couldn't talk, but he found out he wasn't too old to leap for joy. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. When it was time for the baby to be delivered, their friends and relatives all gathered around. <laughs> A right fine boy God has given to you. Zechariah could only beam with joy. When the baby was eight days old, they dedicated him to God. Of course you'll name him Zechariah, just like his father. No, no, he must be called John. What are you thinking? There's no one in your family by that name. I said his name is John. What do you say, Zech? Shaking his head, Zechariah gestured for a writing tablet. And he wrote, in clear, strong letters, his name is John. Well, bless my soul. Instantly, Zechariah's voice returned. Give praise to the Lord. Zechariah, filled with God's spirit, continued to speak God's words. God has come to set his people free. He has acted with great power and has saved us. Long ago, prophets said he would do it. Zechariah cradled his tiny son in his arms. Hmm. You, my child, will go ahead of the Lord and prepare the way for him. You will tell his people how they can be saved and their sins forgiven. Everyone listened in amazement. God had done the impossible by giving Elizabeth and Zechariah a son, and it had brought great joy to them all. Zechariah knew that his son, John the Baptist, would go ahead of the promised one, Jesus, and prepare the way for him. John would tell God's people of how they could be saved and have their sins forgiven. Zechariah and Elizabeth faced a really tough situation. They were old and it must have seemed impossible that they could ever have a baby. Not only that, but they and the other Israelites really had to trust God no matter what. Hundreds of years had passed since God had spoken to them and promised a savior. So in some ways, it might have seemed impossible that the promised one was really going to come. But God did come through. He kept his promise. He made the impossible possible. And it just goes to show you that God is so much bigger than what we see around us right now. He has a bigger plan, his big story. And since we know that he can do the impossible, we can live our lives with joy and trust him no matter what's happening around us. There are probably things in your life that seem impossible too. Maybe your dad just got a new job and you're going to have to leave all your friends and move to a new town. How are you ever going to fit in? It may seem impossible, but God can help you feel at home in the new town and at school. Or maybe you just found out you have an allergy that's going to keep you from eating your favorite foods. How can you live without it? The situation may seem impossible, but God can help you get used to different things and maybe even you'll find a new favorite thing. 
God may not always choose to do the impossible. He doesn't necessarily do what we want or do the things that we expect him mm -hmm. to. He may allow us to walk through hard things so that we can grow from them, but he's always with us and he can do anything, including the impossible. That's one thing we want you to remember today. I can have joy because anything is possible with God. Can you say that with me? I can have joy because anything is possible with God. One more time. I can have joy because anything is possible with God. Let's pray. God, thank you for doing the impossible in our lives, Lord God. Thank you for making the impossible possible for us. And I pray that we are just able to trust you even when things look impossible. Thank you for giving us a story that we can relate to and that we can learn from and grow. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And that's all we have for you guys this week. Can't wait to celebrate Christmas more next week. Bye. Bye.